defendant breaks down as he's questioned by police about the killing of his hysterical murder defendant breaks down as he's questioned by police about the killing of his girlfriend and her 10 year old son. That's what the jury saw today in the double murder trial of Tyrone Johnson. Prosecutors say Johnson planned the murders. His defense attorneys say a recording of the police interview shows something else, though. Fox 13's Gloria Gomez shows us how investigators today handled it. Tyrone Johnson cried hysterically during his interview with investigators. The jury watched as detectives tried to calm him down repeatedly and struggled to understand what he was saying about the day he gunned down his girlfriend, Stephanie Willis, and her 10-year-old son, Ricky. Both were found dead in a bedroom apartment they shared with Johnson. Prosecutors say the horrific events of October 21st, 2018, all began with an argument over what to watch on TV. I changed the TV. You changed the TV? Okay. Johnson continued to break down as he claimed the fight turned personal when Stephanie blamed him for his son's recent suicide. She said, I see why the son killed himself like a you're a and I called him back and I said, come and get me. Johnson called his father for help and heard some of the confrontation. That he hears the phone drop and two shots. Johnson claims the boy came running into the master bedroom. Did he say you hurt my mommy? Is that what he said? Yes. But prosecutors say that's not what the evidence shows. They say the frightened 10 year old hid under his bed and was hunted down by Johnson. We have shell casings, we have blood, we have holes in the wall, in the little boy's room. Prosecutors say a cold and calculated killer that deserves to pay with his life. Gloria Gomez, Fox 13 News. So if Johnson's convicted of first-degree premeditated murder, he could face the death penalty. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechah HaKwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you, other Akim, you brethren, you few sisters, whoever you may be following this truth. And also, let me say shalom to the elect, wherever, wherever, wherever you're scattered abroad. Um, I want to go on this video here that I just happened to, it popped up, and I went to check it out, and it's titled, Flory Jury, Jury Shown Accused Killer Breakdown During Interrogation, right? So, uh, I already knew what it was about before I even clicked it on, because we, we know what happens in that situation. So, I'll try to get through this in a manner of... Um, trying to keep it uh, censored, you know, correctly. Um, I'm going to read a couple comments, and this is why I'll go what I'll say when I'm going to go into it. It says, um, somebody said, this crying is about him, not about his victims. They are beautiful and looked exactly alike. Rest in peace, mother and son, okay? He was crying like that when he killed that baby and his mother. His two beautiful victims are only ones who deserve tears what a monster evil monster okay um somebody else said this is a, a man he says losing someone to suicide the constant stress and struggle of finances plus bad relationship is not a good mix he should have took his insult from her as a breaking point to pack up and leave very true um his crying makes him look guilty. And I'm going to go into, just bear with me. Um, it was a couple ones that I saw. Um, give this guy an Oscar, just acting just about himself. Okay, so these are pretty much the comments. Okay, it says here, crazy, but she said some harsh words, if that's true. See, that's why your son killed himself. That's what she said to him. Who says that kind of stuff? Well, we know Eve says that kind of stuff. She sounds like a narcissist that triggered him the wrong way. Not at all saying, uh, saying it's okay for his actions. And then there were some people saying that she got pretty much what she deserved. You know, you hear all these stuff. Uh, Jake shouldn't have did that. 
but I'll go into the commentary a little bit. Uh, this um, couple, um, first of all, this is couldn't have been nothing new. They probably been going through that on and off for a while. Uh, secondly, we understand in Babylon that Eve has the rights to say whatever she wants to say, and there's no consequences, right? Because Eve gets away with it. And I'll also say that if this situation was reversed, I wonder what we had saw comments like that. I wonder what somebody, and I've seen it. Go to the comments with the, the ones that shows the woman stabbed the man in his sleep, right? I remember that show with Lorena Bobbitt who cut off the man's um, anatomy, let's say that. And she had a lot of supporting fans. So it seems like, as we know in this feminist role, there's gender wars. And that's what it is. And the Lord said he was going to do it. The scripture says the, the, the woman shall compass the man. Okay. Now, if again, if that was not even not, not even that, but a, a Dumian uh, woman, they would have set them up, right? Got them some counseling and uh, see if they can get on their way. Now, I remember the episode where the young women um, stole a car, ran over a couple of people, car flipped. They got out and ran. The one went back to get her cell phone. And then they had these big therapists. The, I mean, a, a panel, this big panel with a bunch of therapists sitting up there saying, well, maybe uh, maybe they can get a second chance at life. We don't know because of the thing that's happening now. She's probably, uh, they're having issues with mental illness. You know, they're having issues with the careers or, or with their families and so forth and so on. But you jakes you do understand that you don't get them kind of passes. Okay. Proverbs 31 and three, and then I'll get back. Give not thy strength unto woman, nor the ways that which destroy of Kings. You know, there is no way that someone should get you to the point that you're going to pull a gun and, uh, shoot the uh, mother and the son in this society. Right. I also say um, we understand we know the scriptures in in the, in the ancient times when Eve went off like that and said some things like that she would get punished for life. You know there were situations like that, but in this society there is no fear, and as long as there's no fear, like we fear the heavenly Father, we fear our Lord. We're lords. We should have some form of fear, but there is none. Right. Because you're not in power. There's, you're not in power. Let's go to Sirach 20, 39 and 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay sore strokes. Right? That man probably wasn't never a killer. He probably never harmed a fly. He probably wasn't a violent person. He could have been. I don't know. If he was, they would have pulled up his past record, so I doubt it. But the spirit was on him. There was a spirit that came on him to do that. So we in these last days, the most high is showing examples. Right. It says in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Right. So the Lord actually done that. Ultimately set up by the heavenly father. Um, Proverbs 18 and 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life. This Eve could have said, see, here's the ironic thing. She already, Eve had already had envy towards him. You got to know that when somebody comes out with something like that in the manner of that talk, they was thinking that all along. And you Jakes need to understand how Eve operates I'm talking about the, there's various ones. It's not talking about all. But you have to understand how, how they operate. You know, the Terminators. Okay? All it takes is know how to push the buttons, and I'm going to say something, and I can get away with it. So the ironic thing is he had a son, and then she had a son. 
So in her mind, I'm better than you because I have a son and yours committed suicide. So you tell a man, your son that had passed committed suicide like a B. And then somebody on the comment board said, how do we know he even said that? He made that up. Now, I doubt if anybody makes anything like that up. He killed her to make that. Uh, he, he made that up just to kill him. No, I don't think so. And then what drove him to that point to do that? Not defending at all anything he's done. But we got to understand that. Is Jake, if he knew the truth, and he knew he was in the truth, this would have saved his life. More than likely. He would have got the breakdowns. He would have got the understanding of life. He would have understood things. He wouldn't have been with anybody like that from the beginning. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to show a pretty smile, the innocent pictures, and say, I've done no wickedness. She eateth, was Proverbs 31? She eateth and wipeth her mouth and say, I've done no wickedness. Right? This is what it is. Again, I'm not condoning what he did. I'm just saying. Time is running out. In this, in, these, in this society, in these prophecies, right? This is the vengeance that's being poured out. Proverbs 15 and 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. And that's what happened um, to this Jake. His spirit was breached when he heard those hurtful words about his son. Now, this Eve job was to console him, right, on this situation with his son. And Eve went to another level just because he wanted to change the TV. At least that's alleged. I'm just going by what they said in the story. And he wanted to change the TV. Um, well, let me get another scripture. This this will kind of sum it up. Let me go to Sirach. And this is... As, as um, the sisters come into the truth, these are the things that they would have to learn, right? Because the Most High is delivering vengeance. He's, he's um, delivering what he said was going to happen. Matthew 10.34 and various other scriptures, 10.35, I think, when he's going to set families as, as um, at variance. And their um, their foes, their enemies shall be of their them and their own households. So, um, when you come into the truth, and you learn these things, not to be jealous over another woman, right? Because that brings nothing but more confusion. If you ever get jealous of a woman, and you a woman, you're gonna have more and more jealousy. That's that won't be the only time. Then you will have to go to the store and go wherever else you at and see all the women dressing like what what happened in a. a Sodom of, you know, Sodom, what we say now, Sodom of Egypt. And then you got to have all this jealousy. When this is all you have to do, so Rock 26 and 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift from the of the Lord. And there's nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. See, you jakes, you're like them frogs in that boiling water. You're burning and you don't even understand what the hell going on. And I guarantee you a lot of these jakes... They are subscribing to the black woman is God, right? They're subscribing to that, okay? And they're subscribing to uplifting Eve, right? They are subscribing to that. And this, these are examples of when things are completely out of order. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom. Recently, everything had seemed fine in their relationship, but Penelope Jackson had claimed that, in fact, she lived in fear of her husband, that he had been coercive and controlling over the 24 years of their marriage. He had shaken her, he had kicked her, he, he had strangled her uh, to the point of unconsciousness. And she said uh, that back in February, during the winter lockdown, she had lost the plot and stabbed him three times at their home in Somerset after he had called her pathetic following a family meal over Zoom. 
Now, um, in the footage, um, she tells the officers that she admitted it all. Um, she directs the officers to the kitchen, and one officer, when they call out for an ambulance pronto, they say, for CPR, uh, she replies, oh, no, no, I should have stabbed him a bit more. Uh, she later tells an officer on that video uh, that he was an aggressive bully and she died murder. And what the jury had to decide and consider was whether she had lost control uh, in continuing to stab her husband during that 999 call, uh, given the years of abuse that she claimed she had suffered.